How do you read where we are with this war? I think it's very clear how we should read it, namely the International Court of Justice, the supreme judicial body in the world, has said the court also ruled that Israel is plausibly committing genocide, and there is no evidence whatsoever, zero evidence, that since the court ruling, Israel has changed its tactics or its strategy in Gaza. So as of, we, as of now, as we speak, Israel is still, by the conclusion of uh, fift, uh, 15 judges in the International Court of Justice, 15 of the 17 justice, judges, Israel is committing genocide or plausibly committing genocide, and it's not honoring its obligations as they were spelled out by the International Court of Justice. When we booked you for this debate, uh, you called Norman Finkelstein an anti-Semite. You said, you have my word that God willing, I will digitally decapitate, digitally disembowel, and digitally destroy him. Uh, do you think that was the right kind of rhetoric? Norman Finkelstein is on the show for only one reason. If the journalistic idiom that Jews are news is true, because you know, Israel's this big, it gets this much attention, then how much more so Jewish anti-Semites get the brightest headlights? Norman Finkelstein is the foremost Jewish anti-Semite on planet Earth. He actually attacked his own parents, whose only crime was to be Jewish. Their entire family was annihilated in Warsaw. They're not victims. They hated Germans and wanted them dead. He didn't think to himself, maybe my parents wanted the Germans to suffer to stop the war, to break the will of the German people to stop murdering gas. 10,000 Jews per day. His hatred of the Jewish people has extended even to his own family. He calls, Jew he calls Israel a satanic state that comes from the boils of hell. He calls it a vandal state. He said that the 15 people murdered in the Charlie Hebdo massacres, he has no sympathy for them whatsoever. But this is the most telling thing of all, and you discussed this the last time. He said, on October 7th, hours after the massacre of 1,200 Jews started, he wrote, it warms every fiber of my soul to see the children of Gaza smiling as their arrogant, Jew, arrogant Jewish uh, supremacists that have been humbled. The stars above in heaven are looking down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Let's just go through this. 400 women shot in the genitals, their breasts cut off as terrorists played with their bloody breasts like a football. Glory, hallelujah. Wolfgang Benz, professor of, of Ellingen, who was one of the foremost German historians of the Holocaust said the only thing interesting about Norman Finkelstein is that he needs a psychiatrist. Okay, well, look, Professor right. Wolfgang, wait, 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 the man, not the issue, and not the question that I asked you, which is to respond to what he was saying, which is a growing feeling around the world, by the way, that Israel is now committing, as he put it, uh, as the courts said, a plausible genocide, is that there is a, a, a shameful number of innocent women and children being slaughtered on a daily basis, and I don't see what the end game is other than the obliteration of most of Gaza and many people living there. 10,000 Jews were gassed a day for four years after the Vanzi Conference in January 1942. To compare that to Gaza is an abomination. Secondly, Norman Finkelstein is a liar. The International Court of Justice specifically said that Israel is not committing a genocide. So when you tell me why do I go after an ad hominem, I'm a... I'm questioning his academic credentials. He just lied on international TV. Well... I'm not sure what was the purpose to inviting either me or Mr. Shmuley to this program, because obviously uh, we are in two entirely different wavelengths. Mr. Shmuley is in the business, which is not surprising, of character assassination. He's in the, ca he's in the business of libel. That's his job, because where he has to confront the facts he would be in a very difficult situation. So let me make one clarification. None of my remarks bear on my personal opinions. I simply am repeating what the documentary record shows. Now, according to Mr. Shmuley, I am a liar because, according to Mr. Shmuley, the International Court of Justice explicitly concluded that Israel was not committing a genocide. Now, I would say that Mr. Shmuley is suffering from what I would call a Judeo-dementia. 
because there is no possibility on earth that any rational human being could have read the opinion or the ruling rendered by the International Court of Justice uh, after the South Africa application and after the oral proceedings. There is no possibility on earth that any rational person can conclude that the International Court of Justice ruled that Israel was not committing a genocide. Number one, Mr. Shmuley seems to think his purpose to being on the program is to personally attack me. Number two, Rabbi Shmuley seems incapable of processing very basic facts. If, that, if Mr. Shmuley believes that the International Court of Justice ruled explicitly that Israel was not committing genocide, if that's what he truly believes, then I would say he's suffering from some form of Judeo dementia. That you and Norm are saying that I went ad hominem. No, I did not. I quoted his own words of Jewish anti-Semitism, vitriol, which are so extreme that they're shocking. I told you, he called his own parents haters of Germans. Not the Germans hated his parents and, and annihilated his family. His, his parents hated the Germans. But I'm going to jump in again, because, again, what you're doing is attacking your other uh, debater here. He but said you're not, I what, suffer from what, dementia, but what, but what, but what for you're God's not, sake. What you're Why not, don't you call him out no, on but that? What dementia? Not, Seriously? With dementia? respect... With respect, what you're not doing is ask, answering the specific questions. There are many, okay, so many... I'm answer the question. Okay, you so know me, so there are many, the many people around the world increasingly concerned about the scale of Israel's response, the appalling death toll of children, uh, the appalling number of children also being orphaned, the appalling number of women being killed, innocent women, and they don't see an end game. They just see Israel okay. continuing to bomb, 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 kill, kill, kill... But how does this end? If the next stage is Rafa, which now has six times as many people in it as it did four months ago and is a huge refugee camp, and you're trying to find just a few thousand Hamas amongst over a million and a half people, then you're going to get even more people around the world saying well, this, a is a, this, is a, this is a senseless way of conducting war. Now, Winston Churchill fought the greatest evil the world had ever seen. Yes. Which led directly to the Geneva Convention to try and prevent these things happening again. Many people think what's happening now in Gaza is a form of that happening again. Norma Finkelstein, No, no, response. no. What's happening in Gaza is what the Americans did with a Norden bomb site. The Israelis are using surgical targeted strikes. Well, the they're killing a lot of Hamas children. Lives because being Hamas that, lives under their homes. If Israel's Hamas being, builds... Rabbi Shmuley, with respect, if Israel's being that precise... Why is it killing so many children? Hamas, unfortunately, wants these children to die because the more that die, the more you're going to challenge me on TV. Israel wants them to live. Israel withdrew in 2005. Hamas builds their military installations under these children's homes, under their kindergartens, under their nurseries, under their hospitals. All right, let we me bring in. We now found 350 miles of tunnels under children's homes. That's the size of the okay, New York subway system. I want to bring in, system. I want to be fair to... What I would say to that is there's a very good reason why this case was brought before the International Court of Justice, that if you examine what Israel has done in Gaza since October 7th, by virtually every dimension you examine it, the intensity of the bombing, the density of the bombing, the magnitude of destruction of civilian dwellings, civilian infrastructure, the percentage, the absolute number of children killed, the relative number of children killed to uh, mil uh, combatants killed, the percentage of women and children versus men killed, the number of medical personnel killed, the number of journalists killed, the number of UN workers killed. By virtually every dimension that you examine the conflict, 
by virtually any and every metric that you examine the conflict, Israel's assault on Gaza, which we should bear in mind, is among the most densely populated places on God's earth, and uh, it has been sealed off from humanity since 2006. As Giora Island put it in March 2004, Giora Island was the head of the Israel, excuse me, yes, of the Israeli National Security Council. He described Gaza, and I'm quoting him now, as a huge concentration camp. That's not me, that's Giora Island, the former head of the Israeli National Security Council. So, if you put all of these metrics together and you put in and you add in the context, the context being a concentration camp in which half the people are children, 70% are refugees. If you add in the context and the metrics, there is a very good reason why Israel was brought before the International Court of Justice. No, no, Allow me to finish. Your, your debating style Allow was to drone on coma-inducing. That's how you debate. You try to put your opponents mm. into slumber. For God's sake, you made your point. It's time for me to respond. That's a dialogue. No, you I'm cannot not, dominate I'm not this done. debate I'm not. like you did with Alan Dershowitz and you dominated. You took three quarters of the time. I won't allow it. Now, let's... Rational hatred of Jews. Rabbi Shmuley, with respect, Norma Finkelstein is not the only person seriously concerned about what's happening in terms of Israel's response. Genocide? Using the word I genocide? Would say, I would genocide? say the majority of the world right now is concerned about what's going on in Gaza is, and is, is and, President Biden and, 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 the United and believes States? that Israel's no. response is now becoming wholly disproportionate. When does this end? How many people are you prepared to kill on the other side before you declare mission accomplished? And why would you think, by the way, that killing so many innocent people in Gaza and destroying so much of the homes in Gaza, north and south, why would you think that that would end radicalization of people who may be sympathetic to Hamas? Why would it not have the opposite effect? Hamas is is a huge concentration camp. I'm quoting him now. Gaza, you mean. Would you also agree, would you also agree that October 7th was a reaction to confining one million children in a concentration camp? Every time he calls Gaza a concentration camp, as if there's gas chambers there, as if there's SS Einsatzgruppen going around shooting Palestinians, he denies the whole, he is a Holocaust denier. Now, I would say that if you are indicting me, then you are also indicting the sanity of the 15 judges on the International Court of Justice, including, quite surprising to me, including the American judge. Now, if you examine the proceedings closely, which I did, each judge had the option of including in their decision what's called a declaration. And the German judge did exercise that option and wrote a five-page declaration in which he distanced himself from certain of the findings. However, it was very noticeable that Israel's main ally in the world, the judge from that country, the American judge, did not issue a declaration, which is to say she went along with the conclusion without qualification, without qualification, that Israel is plausibly committing genocide. Now, I would want to end on the note, as you know, Piers, genocide is the crime of crimes under international law. To be plausibly, plausibly uh, guilty of the crime of genocide, it's a very, very high standard, a very high standard. And it would, it would, it seems to me, require a very high degree of dementia to deny that crime Crimes of a vast, on a vast scale, are occurring in Gaza. Okay. If anything, I was way too easy on them.